Ninth bit as always, man. I wonder, is there any way to draw on Unity? Yes, there is a way. You see, I'm drawing a smiley right now on my phone and this is a project in Unity I just created. So I will show you how I did this and I will provide you all the scripts in the description. Let's start right away creating a plane. So we go to 3D object and plane. Set it to 0, 0, 0 and we will scale the thing a little bit up. So that's our canvas we will paint on. So we have to create a script for the painting. We call this uh, paintable. I think this is a good name. Okay. And now we need a brush. And for the brush, we do the same thing again. We create a 3D object, a plane, and maybe we will scale this down a little bit. Uh, move this a little bit up. And we have to create a material for it. So this is our brush material. And we will call this plane brush. Now we have to drag and drop the material on this mesh renderer. And we will set an albedo. So we will take the default particle and make this transparent and give this a uh, blue color and we will set the smoothness to zero. I think this is pretty good. Maybe we'll play a little bit around with the rendering mode. Fade, cut out. Um, I think transparent is the white one and we have to ca set cast shadow to off. Ah, now it looks way better. So this is our brush. Um, we will create a prefab by just drag and drop it to our assets and then we can delete it. So that's all we need for the brush. And now we have to edit the script. So the first thing we have to do is just create one prefab as a game object, call it brush. And there we go. We can now drag and drop this prefab on our paintable script. And that's all we need to do. So on update, we will do the following. If we click, we want to paint. So we say input dot get mouse button zero. This means we can paint with the mouse or as you can see or could see in the uh, intro video, um, you can also paint with your finger on a tablet or a, any mobile device. So now we will do the old trick we, will, uh, we always do, we will cast away. So uh, we go to the camera main, this is our main camera in the scene, screen point to way and the input dot mouse position is our position on the screen. And this will cast away um, until we hit some collider. So let's have a look at the collider. Uh, the plane needs a mesh collider, everything is good. The brush shouldn't have any collider, so we will remove the collider so don't, that we don't collide with the brush. And then we need a ray cast hit. And if physics, raycast, ray out hit. So if we hit anything with this ray here using the physics engine, then we will do the following. Um, we will instantiate, inst instantiate there a brush. So and the brush is our brush. Uh, on the hit point position. Hit point. Uh, I think the point is already, yes, the point is already a vector three. So this is great. Um, so if we instantiate the brush directly on the plane, it can have some strange effects. So we will 
uh, add in vector up, but we won't go up a complete. Um, so uh, you have to add it. A complete unit. We only want to go up a fraction of a unit. I think this is enough. This will look great. And um, we have to set a rotation, but we don't want to re um, rotate it. So we set it to quaternion identity, which is something like a one. You can imagine it like that. And the parent is our current transform. Um, the next thing is we will scale this. So we need a size of the brush. So public float brush size. Um, I will set this to 0 0.1. And now we do the following, go transform scale equals vector 3, 1. So this is everything is scaled by one. And then we will multiply this by the brush size. So okay, let's give it a try. Let's see what is happening. Yeah, as you can see here, we can already paint. It looks a little bit strange, but we will fix it right now. We will go to this material and set it to fade. So it was a one rendering mode. Rendering mode fade is way better. And now we can paint. We can even change the brush size, maybe double it. And then our brush is way bigger. So we could stop here now because we can paint. Um, everything looks fine. So you can say, okay, it's a little bit messy to have so many objects. So what you can do is uh, you can render these objects on the plane and get rid of all this. So if you have to render it to the texture of this plane. So how do you render such a thing to a texture? Um, I will show you this right now and I will even show you uh, how you can save this complete thing. So what we need is of course some kind of a button to trigger an event. Um, as always go to UI canvas, create a canvas and then you go to UI button to create a button. This button is uh, pretty small. Um, so I will set this to scale with screen size. Now the button looks way better. We will edit the text and we'll say, okay, it's safe. Now let's move it here because this is a good position for a save. Um, you can maybe move it a little bit around here or make an icon or something like that. Um, but this is good enough for me. I will create a method called save and this method is called as soon as we click on the button. So therefore what we need to do is just drag and drop the plane here on the on click event select paintable and select save and now save should be called as soon as I click save. Um, just to make sure everything is working as I expected. I will now use debug log to just output the data pass. The data pass is the pass the, that we will use to save the image. Save. It says OK. This is our asset folder, which is good. And now we will save this. So to save this, um, you need to be at a certain position and the position is at the end of the rendering. But if you um, click on the button, you are uh, in some kind of a different, uh, yes, yeah, sweat and on a complete different situation and position of the execution, you have to really wait until the end. So we will start a coroutine to get there. And we will call it um, co-save. 
and our coroutine will be a method. Okay, we will move the debug clock here to make sure the coroutine is really started. Um, so we will yield return a new rate for end of frame and then we are exactly where we want to be. So how do you save it? The first thing you have to do is you have to set up a camera that captures this image. So we will create a second camera. Now you see this is our main camera. Um, <clears throat> we will create a new render texture. Call it our texture. And this is a texture we will use to render everything on. So we will create this cam. We have created this camera. Call it render camera. Just drop and uh, drag and drop the texture on the target texture. So now it's not a normal camera. It's a camera that captured anything on the on the screen or uh, what it has to capture, and then save it to this uh, texture. So <clears throat> we have to reposition the complete thing. Um, we will set the position to here, move it a little bit up and rotate it by 90 degrees around the x-axis. Make it a autographic camera so that we will capture it perfectly. Change the size until we see here in the preview everything is captured. I think 50 is a good value. Now everything is captured, the complete canvas we have here. Um, if I move it around, you can see this is really a camera that is capturing our game scene. And this is now using this target texture to just capture our rendering. So let's try it. We will paint here. And can we see it on our texture? Yes, you, you see already this is a texture. You can use this texture to maybe apply it to a mesh or something so that the user um, paints anything here and it will be drawn to a mesh. But we have something different in our mind. Uh, we will create a render texture property, call it art texture, and we will drag and drop this. So where's our plane? There it is. Drag and drop this here, and now it's connected. What we can do with texture is we can use this um, as our active texture. I don't know why you have to do it, but you have to do it in order to uh, do the following steps. So Unity knows, okay, this is active a texture that I have to use to store some files. And we have to convert the render texture in a texture 2D because the texture 2D has a method um, called encode to PNG and we want to have this uh, as a PNG file so that we can save it. So what we will do, um, we create a texture 2D as a new texture 2D. The size is uh, exactly the size of our render texture. with height. So, now this is a blank texture to the, uh, we have to read the pixel of our render texture. So we create a new rectangle. Uh, it starts at zero, zero, it has the same width and height as our render texture. And uh, the destination is Zero, 0 So now we have painted our render texture on the texture 2D, 2D and we have to apply it. And that's all. Now the texture 2D has exactly the same information as our render texture. Now we can encode it to PNG, to JPEG and to some kind of file. I don't know. So I will choose PNG. And then we have data 
as a return value. The data is a byte array. And now we can just use file dot file is unknown using system IO. Now it's known. Uh, write all bytes. So now we have to specify the path. We will just take the application data path plus um, maybe saved image PNG and the data. Now we will save all the data to this file. Um, I will copy this, paste it in the debug log so that we can see it. Okay, let's try this. Now, let's paint something really beautiful, perfectly. Save, and hopefully it says okay. I have saved it here. And let me have a look. Saved image PNG, and there we go, it worked. Perfect. Let's try out a second different image, maybe with a bigger brush size, making two eyes, a smaller brush size, making a mouth, and a really small brush size, making a nose. And we will save this, and there we go. Beautiful. So, <clears throat> if you like the video, leave a like. If you wanna know more, like paint on any mesh or how you can use this render texture to uh, just use it on any object or how you can spray on the wall or something like that. Let me know it in the comments. Leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more than this and see you next time.